Hello everybody, we're the Crocs. I'm Mark. Deanna. Will. Megan. And, and Lily Squirm. <laughs> um, we're here for your <laughs> devotions for week seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's staying. So from week, week seven, from the disciples, day three, we're going to read from Matthew 16, verses 5 through 28. When they went across the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said to them. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They discussed this amongst themselves and said, It is because we didn't bring any bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, You of little faith, why are you talking amongst yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000? And how many basketfuls you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000? And how many basketfuls you gathered? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread? But be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When Jesus came to the region of the Caesarea Philippi, he said to his disciples, Who do people say is the son of man? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this is not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom to heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. When, then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Jesus predicts his death. From, the time on, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed on the third day and be raised to life. Peter looked, took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some of who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming to his kingdom. We are at the turning point in Jesus' ministry. We began to see Jesus shift from teaching and speaking in parables to him speaking very plainly to his disciples about what was in store for his future. Now he would suffer, die, and come back to life. As Jesus began to prepare the twelve for what was to come, Peter was not pleased about what he was hearing. Verse 22 says, Peter took him, Jesus, aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Did you catch that? Peter rebuked Jesus. A few verses earlier, we heard Peter confess that Jesus was the Son, was the Christ, the Son of the living God, and now he had the audacity to criticize and express his disapproval directly to Jesus' face. The things that Jesus was saying were, from Peter's perspective, terribly wrong. Before pointing too many fingers at Peter for arguing with Jesus, we must look back at ourselves and examine how many times we do the same. How often are we faced with a situation, a struggle, a diagnosis, or a promise to future events that we don't agree with, 
and we come before God with a rebuking, criticizing attitude. How often do we choose to simply trust the words and the plans of our Heavenly Father, even if they don't line up with what we think is best? We serve a God who has the perfect, fullest perspective of our lives. There is a divine, sovereign reason that He writes our story, not us. He always has and always will know everything fits together, and quite plainly, we don't. Many, may we come before him with a heart of worship and trust, even when we don't fully understand. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 5. So that's the verse for the week, and this is our crazy version of Monday nights. You usually find us at the back, and uh, thank you for joining us this week. Peace be with you.